So in this video, we're going to do a couple return ratio examples. And I'm going to start with uh, some simpler examples just so that we can get a feel for how the analysis method works. So let's start with one of perhaps the simplest of all circuits, um, the common drain amplifier. And it turns out that this circuit is actually a feedback circuit. Uh, so we've got a VN here. And that's kind of interesting because I didn't know that when I first learned about this circuit. But uh, so here's the input, here's the output. But the common drain is actually a feedback circuit. And uh, we're going to we're going to demonstrate that by calculating its return ratio. So what is the what is its return ratio? Well, we know uh, for transistors, at least, it's easiest to think of in terms of the negative of the VGS in response to some test voltage. When we apply, we change this GM VGS source inside the transistor to an independent source of value GM V test. Well, okay, so let's let's do that. Um, let's create the small signal model first of this circuit. So we know VDD is going to become ground. So we've got an RD. And then I, I'm going to ignore RO just because um, I don't want to make my life any more difficult than it needs to be in this video. So this is GM VGS, and we don't have an RO. This is RS. And then our VGS is here. So that's just the simple hybrid pi model. And this is our input voltage VN. So how do we calculate the return ratio for this circuit? Well, remember, first we have to replace this dependent source with an independent one of the value of value GM V test. So we've got an independent source now of value GM V test, and we need to ground the input. So let's just ground the input. Um, and that's because the input doesn't matter for the uh, for the feedback loop, and it would be impossible to calculate R um, if we if we had an input voltage. So what is uh, what is VGS in this circuit? Well, um, VG is just VGS is just VG minus VS, and since VG is zero because it's grounded, this is just minus VS. Okay, so what is VS? Well, this is VS, and we see that we've got a current. Um, we've got a current GMV test flowing through this resistor RS, which means that the voltage here, VS is just going to be GM V test times RS. Okay, uh, now we can just plug that into the equation for return ratio, uh, negative VGS over V test. And since here uh, VGS is, we, we saw it was minus VS, uh, this is just equal to minus GM V test RS. Okay, so let's just plug that into this here equation. And we'll see that the return ratio is negative, negative GM V test RS over Oh, sorry, that should be a V-test uh, over V-test. So the V-test cancel, the negatives cancel, and you see why we, uh, why we define this as negative uh, VGS over V-test. Uh, and the return ratio is just GM RS. And we're done. So that is the return ratio, when you neglect RO, that is, uh, for this common drain amplifier. And just notice something interesting uh, real quick. Uh, it didn't matter where we took the output voltage for the calculation of the return ratio. So we could have defined the output voltage as being up here, for example, in which case this would be a common source amplifier. And the return ratio uh, would be exactly the same because we, we never talked about V out in the calculation of our return ratio. That just that didn't matter. Um, so the return ratio you'll you'll see starts to it, it characterizes the circuit independent of uh, where the where the output is, which is kind of cool. Now let's say we want to calculate the return ratio for a different circuit, say one of the circuits that we see all the time, 
Um, let's say we want to characterize the return ratio of an inverting op amp. And I realize I've kind of drawn this upside down, uh, but it's kind of how I prefer to draw it. Um, so we've got a voltage V in and V out. And we're going to assume that the op amp has some finite voltage gain A. And so previously we defined R in terms of VGS uh, and V test, but now we don't have a VGS, um, but we do have a dependent source. Remember the ideal model for an op amp looks like this, A times V plus minus V minus. This is what's inside an ideal op amp. If we assume it's got infinite, or infinite input resistance and zero output resistance. And so we can, uh, we can call this V plus minus V minus term, uh, v, v plus minus, if you prefer. And so we've got A V plus minus, which we need to replace. We need to replace this dependent source with an independent one. So with some value A V test. And so let's do that. Uh, first, let's redraw the op amp a little larger so we can fit some stuff inside it. So plus <clears throat> minus. And then we've, we said we had our input voltage V in. And since this is an inverting op amp, we had a resistive feedback network like so. And then inside this op amp, we know that we have the ideal op amp model is just a dependent voltage source, A V plus minus. And that's just shorthand for V plus minus V minus. Okay, so we need to replace this in, this dependent source with a val with an independent source of value A V test. So let's do that. Well, we've now got an independent source, A V test. And so we need to compute now V plus minus. Well, what is V plus minus? Well, it's V plus minus V minus. Um, and here we see that V plus, the voltage of this terminal, is just zero. So V plus minus is just minus negative of V minus. So we just need to compute the value here. And before I forget, we also need to ground the input because the input is no longer involved in our feedback network. That's why, that's, uh, why we needed to insert this um, independent source in here. So we just need to compute V minus. And we see this is just a simple voltage divider. Uh, if you kind of look at it sideways and then squint a little bit, um, let's call this RF and this is R1, uh, you can see that this independent source is just connected to one resistor, RF, which is connected to another resistor, R1, and we're interested in the value here, V minus. Um, so this is literally just a voltage divider. Uh, so we can calculate V minus, and I apologize, I've, I seem to have switched the location of the subscripts. Um, let me just uh, let me just undo that real quick. Uh, so V minus is just A V test, the voltage, uh, times R1 over R1 plus RF. And you'll start to notice how absurdly useful voltage dividers are uh, when when calculating things. And the reason we can do that is because this terminal is no longer affecting, um, is no longer really connected to anything because we've replaced the dependent source with an independent one. Okay, uh, so now what's the return ratio? Well, the return ratio, uh, just as with the transistors, instead of VGS, it's V plus minus, minus V plus minus over V test. And remember the minus is just here so that we can get a positive number for our, uh, our, our return ratio. So V plus minus, uh, we said was just minus V minus. And so we've got two negatives. Let's just cancel those out real quick so we don't have to deal with them. So I just erase them. Um, and now we can just plug in V minus. So the return ratio is just A V test times R1 over R1 plus RF over V test. And the V tests cancel, and we're left with A times R1 over R1 plus RF.
Beautiful. That is the return ratio for this op amp. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them below and I'll see you next time. Thanks.